Now, when we were in the batch converter, we saw the clean metadata batch action that we could apply. Let's look in here in our browser under Tools Metadata, Clean, and that brings up Clean Metadata as a command that we can apply to any files. And it works the same way. We can remove metadata based on categories. And in this case, we have the comment and the XMP metadata in its entirety and our IPTC IIM metadata selected. And look at this. We have something called Optimize Hoffman Table. Now, the Hoffman Table is a component of the data compression mechanism that JPEG uses. The Huffman table, if you make a custom one for a particular photo, an optimized one, will save you a little bit of file size. A few percent, but it's a few percent that you get for free. This is a lossless transformation, so there's no cost to it. It's a complete freebie. And since it is lossless, we can apply it through this dialog which doesn't affect the quality of the picture. Metadata manipulations in all of these programs are lossless as far as picture quality is concerned because none of them require you to open and resave the image. So let's leave this image selected and we'll just select everything. By the way, you can select EXIF thumbnail and GPS data individually out of the EXIF group if you want to. But we'll just zap all of our metadata from this particular photo and we will take a note of the file size which is 7 megabytes 497 kilobytes. We'll let that run. Now we have 7 megabytes 492 kilobytes which leads me to believe that the Huffman table was already optimized on this picture, but we gained a little bit in terms of file size. Earlier, we looked at how we can turn the tooltips and the slide mount labels on and off to see our metadata, but we have to customize those functions to make that work that way. We have to tell them that we want them to display metadata for us. So let's see how that works. We'll go to our preferences, and we'll do tooltips first because it came up right here. We saw before that this tick box turns tooltips on and off. With tooltips on, you have this rather gigantic field in which to customize your tooltips. And if we take a look at the tooltip that's here, we can see that it uses variables. We can recognize these because they look very much like the variables in Photo Mechanic. The next thing that we can see that's kind of cool is that we can use HTML formatting, or at least some HTML formatting, in this dialog. So we can write the stuff that we want to appear in our tooltips pretty much the way we want it to appear. In this case, I've done the tooltip to show the IPTC caption. I've added an HTML break tag, which makes a new line. An HTML bold tag, which bolds what comes after it. And now we're in that second new line. And here we have the copyright field variable, followed by closing the bold tag, followed by another break tag. So now we're on what? Our third line the file name variable, which will print in the file name, another break to give us another line, the modified date variable, and also the create date variable, a break, and in the new line we have size in kilobytes, the variable for size in kilobytes. We have KIB, which is the XNView developer's way of abbreviating 
kilobytes. Let's just change that to KB, which is the way the rest of us do it. Then we have width and X and height, which will give us the dimensions of that particular photo. Now, where do the variables come from? How do we write this? We'll put a little space in there. And we'll go down here to the lower left of this dialog, and we have an insert button with a couple of arrows. This appears in a number of places in XN View. And when you click it, it brings up a set of cascaded menus that allow you to pick variables for different metadata values. Now, the IPTC variables extended below the limit of our video capture screen. So let's put something else in here. Let's do the color label. We can put a variable in here that'll show us the color label in the tooltip. In practical terms, I really don't know how much good that'll do because you can see the color label already if your cursor is over a particular picture, but what the heck. We'll put the color label in and we'll label it color, colon, and a space, and then the variable for color label. Now, whatever you do in this dialog, and this is pretty cool, can be saved using the Save button here, and it's saved out as a persistent preference, and you can choose it later, so you can make different tooltips for different purposes. Let's just OK this one, go back to our browser, get rid of our highlighter, and we'll look at our tooltip. And as you can see at the bottom of the tooltip, we've now added a place for the color tag. That image doesn't have one, but this one does. So wait for our tooltip to come up. There you go. And it says that the color is red, and the key for red is 1. So that wasn't a very practical edit to our tooltip, but it was an edit to our tooltip to illustrate the principle. And we'll go back, and we'll just reset this to one that I know is practical. Now, what about the slide mount labels? We'll go back to our preferences. And for this, we go to thumbnail and labels. And we get this menu builder sort of a thing. And the way this works is we choose things that we like on the left side, and we press the arrow button. It moves them to the right side. And we're already formatted here in lines. And these things are all variables. So you can see in this particular case that on the first line, we have the variable for the file name. The second line is a custom variable. If we go to our pick list at the left, we have the custom variables at the bottom. And there are five of them. And if we click on any one of them, we have a space here at the bottom where we can construct a line of characters that we type and variables that XNView inserts. And over here we have two little arrows, and it brings up completely off our video screen the same cascading menu affair to choose different variables for different metadata fields. Now, as we go down the line here, we can choose the background color for our slide mount, and we can choose our text color. So this is how I made the copyright line be red. And that's pretty much how you do that. Oh, you can move you can move lines up and down. Same sort of functionality that we've seen in really a lot of different programs. And that is how you uh, customize your slide mount label in XN View. Now I'll show you one thing that's a little bit confusing. If you go here in your preferences categories and you go to metadata. Look what you've got here. Here's another tab that's called labels. 
This particular one is the text labels that go with the color markers that you can put on images. That's just a little bit confusing. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. But if it comes up and you remember that you were on a tab called Labels, you are not crazy. There really are two tabs called Labels, and they do completely different things. We'll dismiss that, go back to our browser view once again. Now let's say we need to share some pictures with people in a forum that doesn't support showing metadata with the pictures. So I'm talking about a file sharing service like Box or Dropbox or Google Drive or an FTP server, for example. How can we share our metadata outside of our pictures in an environment like that so that people can understand what the pictures are about? You may have remembered the export text functionality in Photo Mechanic. And sure enough, XNView has a version of that. So let's select a bunch of pictures. And we will go to create something called a file list in XNView. That brings up this dialog where we can see that we have fields which look like lines or columns really they're just sort of continuous. We have fields in which we have variables and type that we have typed in. And there's a little plus button here which adds more of these fields. And we have a choice of output formats. We can choose text, CSV, or XML. Now just like the equivalent function in Photo Mechanic, You'll need to experiment with this until you get a result that you like. Now, perhaps to save you a little time, I have indeed experimented, and what I found I liked best was to select text as my output format and then manually go in and add commas after each value or each field. So essentially, by doing this, when I hit Save As, I'm going to end up saving a CSV file that has the .txt extension on it. It's going to have values. It's going to have commas. The only thing it lacks to be a CSV file is saying CSV. It's going to look something like this. Fairly ugly. But if I take that same file and I go ahead and change the file extension from .txt, to .csv. Now, it's a CSV file, and I can open it in a spreadsheet program, and it's going to look like this, which serves my purposes if I want to communicate the contents of certain metadata fields to people for a batch of files. Here we have the file name so that we can associate it with a particular picture. Here's what the caption is. Here's what the byline is. Here's your copyright statement and the size and height and width, which I just like to know. So that's one way of sharing metadata with people outside of the pictures. Another way we can do this in XNView, and we will go back and select our pictures again, is we can go to XNView's print dialog which is very much like Photo Mechanics, and it's actually very nice. It's got an excellent preview. It works just the way you think it's going to work. In this case, we've chosen thumbnails, and as we can see in our preview, they're annotated with a detailed caption, which, if we go to our caption options, we can see we have constructed with the file name and the IPTC caption. We can also type information in here that we want to appear under every picture. There are header and footer options, and it works just like you think it's going to work. And again, as we can in Photo Mechanic, or Lightroom for that matter, we can output our contact sheet as a PDF file so that we could post it 
with a folder full of pictures in Dropbox or on an FTP server. And you have other options here. You can do individual pictures, once again, annotated with a caption. And you can configure your thumbnail, your page of thumbnails, to have more or less rows and columns, different spacing. It'll make them bigger and smaller. Basically, it's an excellent print dialog, and it has more uses other than just making a printout of a picture. So there you have it. That is XNView, an excellent all-around tool for webmasters, a budget tool for photographers for editing and working with metadata, and ultimately a really nice tool for preparing and optimizing images for the web. That'll be the subject of another how-to later, and we will also do some more of those with some of our other programs of choice. I'm Carl Seibert. Thank you for joining me. Please reach out in the comments or on social media. And until next time, mind your metadata.